I'm losing my way. Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. We are actually at a friend's house right now, and they have a few plumbing issues that they wanted us to take a look at and rectify if we can. The first thing that I normally do whenever I come to a job site like this, when there are multiple issues at hand, is I like to go over them one at a time, find out what sort of things we're going to need in order to rectify them, and then run to the truck one time and get that all sorted out and get all the material once. I find it a little bit more efficient that way because you don't have to run to the truck multiple multiple times and uh, you won't lose any energy and any gas in the tank just by doing that basically so from what I know right now there's an issue with this kitchen sink right here we're gonna start off by taking a look filling it up see what sort of results we get apparently there's some sort of leak by the way love you guys thank you so much for this and the other couple of things that we have is I know that there's a wobbly toilet upstairs that we got to sort out and I think in the same washroom we have a sink that is filling up so Let's get to work. Let's have some fun. Oh, and by the way, peeps, you know what to do, baby. Let's go do some delicious plumbing. You've gotten to me, and that's my mistake. So much say, I can't get too far. So I just want to show you what sort of state the drain is in right now. So I came in here, kind of moved this, and realized that the drain moves up and down, and it slides off rather easily like you just saw right there. Uh, basically, this wasn't taut at all, and it had a tendency to just fall and start draining out. So it looks like looks like the drain is kind of in rough shape, and I think it... This is the source right here. If you look at the way this P-trap is looking right now, it's actually rotated a little bit. And I don't understand how this rotation came to be. It's on an angle for sure, but it seems to be watertight. Oh, okay. This is on a 45 down. So it kind of angles towards this side right here. So it's glued in a fashion that's not really ideal for the situation that we have right here. You gave me your heart and took it away. I'm going so here's the problem that we're running into, okay? The problem with this being rotated the way it is, is that the rest of everything else is square and not rotated. It is straight. So now that this goes into it straight, it is very difficult to thread this nut on because it has a tendency of cross-threading here. So you have to actually maneuver the drain and push this at an angle so that it's flush with this guy. And these two basket strainers are stopping the rotation from taking place. So essentially, if you connect this, that means you are compromising some other connection here. You either are dropping it down and rotating a bit so that it could actually finally stay or it's not tightening at all. That's the issue that we're dealing with here. I was spinning this guy for a good couple of minutes because he has no interest in tightening. And you see the gasket right there. Like it has no, like there's no way for it to go. So my friends are experiencing an issue because whoever assembled this drain did it incorrectly to begin with. Here's how I think I'm gonna rectify this issue right here, okay? What I'm gonna do, instead of reassembling the entire drain, which is one option, of course, I'm probably gonna cut the drain here. I'm gonna introduce a clean out. Like I've said many times in the past, here in Ontario, you require a clean out on a kitchen drain. So we'll throw a clean out onto that. And then I'll assemble a brand new P-trap for us. And that should be enough. I'm, I should be able to get by with just that because I think it's this rotation that's throwing everything off. Okay, so that's one problem down. We have a little bit of a material list already. Let's go upstairs and figure out what's going on with that toilet and that sink. Let's talk about what's going on here. So we have two bolts here and these guys are 
spinning. They're a little bit loose and they're spinning. But aside from that, from what I understand, this is a watertight toilet. Okay, we have the same issue on this side as well. We're gonna have to get some of those finished caps that basically go over the bolt and make it look like it's part of the toilet. Once we get those, we can tighten this down, see if they tighten secure the toilet down. And if they do, we're good to go. We don't have to do anything else. We will go through a testing phase, obviously. Or, worst case scenario, what we'll have to do is lift the toilet up, put in a new gasket, put the bolts back in, secure them correctly, and then tighten it down again. So whenever I'm in a situation like this, what I typically do is I kind of do a little bit of overkill in regards to the amount of material that I bring in. So not only will I bring those caps in, I'll also bring in a couple of gaskets, maybe a new supply line just to be safe. And that way, if I do need to lift up the toilet, you know, I have everything here. I don't have to run to the truck and get it sort of thing. And we also have to grab our shop vac just in case we need to lift up the toilet. All right, let's take a look at this sink. Definitely drains a bit slow. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is essentially come under here, take off the trap, just see if anything is lingering inside. Maybe it could be that simple of a repair and see how the drain reacts basically. Let's open it up, see what we meet. Okay, so took a quick look. It looks pretty clear on the way in. Trap looks to be free of any sort of obstruction. I think our issue is in there. If you take a look over here, clear passageway in here. You see, there it is. So it's pretty clear. We don't have any obstructions in there either. So we'll grab the snake and we'll bring everything in, do the toilet and do this at the same time. So we got our work cut out for us. Let's go outside, grab our stuff and get to work. I want to show you where we're at with the kitchen drain, okay? So take a look. I ended up taking these two trap adapters and pushing them as high up as I can. And then I cut the drain, put a coupling, I cut the drain back there, and I put my clean out right here. My clean out is where I started building from. So now that this drain is as high as it can be, we know it's not gonna drop anymore because I'm assembling everything else so that it's just as high, in other words. Threw in my new P-trap threw in my new coupling, glued everything up, and everything should be good to go. I tighten these bad boys up, and now what we can do is sit back and see how the drain reacts, see if it is slow, see if it's fast, see if it holds water, and that's the most important. Let's go do that now. All right, let's see. Out here on the street, I'm losing my All right, nice and dry. You've got into me, and that's my mistake. Some might say, I can't get too far without seeing your face. Oh. You gave me your heart and took it away. I'm going underground, going underground. Tell your love and comes around. Love and comes around. 
Okay, so that went pretty smoothly. I ended up throwing the snake in and taking out a little bit of hair and gunk, which is typically what you find inside vanity. And that, I guess that's the only thing you really gotta stipulate when you're talking to a customer. You gotta make sure that whenever you're cleaning off a brush, that hair does not go into the sink. Unfortunately, that hair can tangle everything else coming down. It's very easy for it to do that. Also, I mean, if you're the kind of person that shaves in the sink, you gotta be worried about how long the hair is as well. It might be worth doing a trim in a garbage and then doing a final shave. You know, these sorts of things. But my friends just recently moved in. I don't think this was actually their doing. I think it was a, a drain that was kind of like this over a long duration of time. It's just something that we had to clean out and clear out. So the good thing is, is I thought I didn't have any toilet caps. Fortunately, I do have toilet caps on me. And I'm gonna be able to throw these on, tighten them down and see how that goes and then go through a testing phase. So that's the next play, let's go. Going underground, going underground. Alright, I've had a change of heart, I'll tell you why. This nut right here is a bit of a pain in the butt. And the reason why that is is because it's kind of, I, I can't, I don't think it's cross-threaded, but I think it's seized in the position that it needs to be. And the bolt also rotates on us infinitely. And this one's doing something very similar, to be honest. And I'm just curious to see what's going on underneath it all. Because if I can check out what's happening underneath it all, I can verify A, everything's okay under here, but B, uh, we can also secure the nuts onto the flange the way I normally do. That way I don't run into this issue in the first place. And for me to fumble around with it for the next half an hour to eventually take it off, it's just a little bit of a time waste. So I brought everything in for that purpose. I'm going to go get the shop vac, vacuum this all out, take it off, and then start fresh. Okay, so that's the game plan. Let's go. So there's a couple of things that clear up the situation conceptually that I want to describe to you. So one of the issues that we had was this bolt was rotating like mad. And if you look down here, the flange is actually cracked. And this is an issue with flanges is that if you put too much strain on them, if you over tighten bolts, they can actually break on you just like this is right here. The other thing that I'm noticing is that Although the gasket's good and it's brand new, it doesn't look like there's a tremendous amount of compression taking place. Looks like it just sat on the gasket, if you know what I'm saying. Gasket doesn't look very compressed. And the other thing that I'm noticing here is the rest of the flange looks okay. We got a couple of options. One is, is we can actually build this flange up, see if we can raise it a bit higher so that there's more compression on the new gasket coming in. Uh, we can secure these bolts onto the flange so that they don't rotate anymore. That's going to be very useful for us, especially with the situation of it rotating constantly on us. That's a very annoying situation. And a lot of plumbers that I know eventually decided, you know what, we're just going to secure these damn things down so we don't have to go chasing for them and irritatingly trying to tighten something that is also rotating. So we're going to do that as well and uh, let's see how this goes. So that really works out right now. I ended up securing the bolts onto the flange, like I was saying. And then I threw a one inch gasket down and it actually seems to do the job. It seems to compress as much as we need it to compress. So I didn't have to raise the flange at all, fortunately, because of that. So what I'm gonna do now is throw on a new supply line and tighten this up and give it a test. Let's go. Okay, 
Just silicone the toilet, put a new supply line, put a little piece of paper over there just to see if we have any drips basically. And just like that peeps, we are done a whole day of service. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification so you know exactly when we're getting videos. Smash that thumbs up, share with friends, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby. Love is not around anymore. Oh, and